Heavenly Father, speak to us this day, not from the outer court or the inner court, but from the very holy of holies. Prepare us, O Lord, to hear your word in truth. And prepare us, Lord, to obey it and live it out for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for your holy word, which was made flesh in the person of your Son, Jesus Christ. And that we, the body of Christ, have been given authority and to walk out the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the throng of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Our problem is we are too self-sufficient to walk in faith. We don't understand that we think we're that in control of our lives. And so John the baptizer, who baptized with water, which is practical, which is external rite, an external baptism, a physical baptism, he says, I baptize you with a practical thing. I baptize you with an outward or an external baptism, but there's one mightier than I or greater than I who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And he's doing this in the wilderness. Last week, the gospel revealed that we must go through a season of necessary endings in order to get new beginnings. How many of you are needing a new beginning in some area of your life? Well, you can't get a new beginning until you let go of the old ending. This week reveals a season of time in the wilderness. God loves the wilderness. As Alex said, it's beautiful, but it's raw. When the men went to MROP a couple of years ago, we discovered how raw the wilderness can be. And we're not a people who wants to go to the wilderness. We like comfort and climate control. We don't understand the purpose of the wilderness in our life. We think the wilderness is some type of punishment from God from what we've done wrong, when in fact the wilderness is a tool of development for us. In fact, the Holy Spirit uses the wilderness to reveal what's really in us. The wilderness has a divine purpose, but it can make us feel overwhelmed and lost. Has anybody felt overwhelmed lately? It can make us feel vulnerable and at risk. Has anybody felt at risk or vulnerable lately in any area of your life? It can make us afraid and fearful. The wilderness can make us angry and resentful because what I expected to make me comfortable is not there. What I expected to appreciate me is not appreciating me. The wilderness is the tool of the Holy Spirit for divine development. It can make us anxious and uncertain. But most of all, the wilderness can make us feel ignored and unappreciated. Are you in a wilderness today? The title of my message is, Find Your Way in Your Wilderness. Not from it, but in it. Because God, God uses the wilderness to reveal what's really in us. See, the wilderness manifests different things for our lives. It is, in the, it is the in-between places. It's in between Egypt and the promised land. I, last year I preached this message, I call it the tweener place. <laughs> Where are you tempted to complain and blame other people? I said, where are you tempted to complain and blame others for your unhappiness and dissatisfaction? This is when we find ourselves waiting for the one who is more powerful than I. Now, this statement is heavy duty. The one that is more powerful than I 
means I at some point have to relinquish my sufficiency in order to receive the one who is more powerful than me. Oh, I know it's not, you know, this is Advent. We're being prepared. As difficult as the wilderness may be, it is the place in which we prepare the way of the Lord's promise for us. The promise is at the other side of the wilderness. It's not before the wilderness. Thus the way candle, not the blame candle. Thus the way candle, not the complain candle. See, the problem with complaint is it's contagious. Complainers need someone to complain to. And people who listen to complaint are people who've not reconciled their desert journey yet. Can I get a witness in this place up here? Because I'm telling you right now, complaint is the demonic disease of the wilderness. But when we open our eyes, we find the way we anticipate the one who is greater than I. Not greater than us, not greater than you, but greater than I, whose shoe I am not worthy to lace. Can I get an amen? After the Israelites left Egypt, they went to the wilderness. It was their preparation for the promised land. But there was a problem. They wandered there for 40 years. This is for free, what I'm about to tell you. You want things to change? Quit complaining about the way things are. It's not going to change as a result of complaint. It's not going to change as a result of blame. Well, my parents did this. My spouse does this. When you are complaining about Uh, something other than what the Holy Ghost is putting in you. You will wander and wander. Nothing can change. Nothing can change. We must be a community of people that renounces complaining in our midst. If we get anything out of Advent, let's hold each other accountable and stop complaining. Stop the blame game. But the wilderness reveals this stuff for a reason. After Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit led him to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. The preparation of the wilderness for the children of Israel was for the promise, the promised land. The preparation for Jesus was public ministry. The wilderness is where the Holy Spirit works. Alex said it this morning. You discover who you are on the way to the destiny you cannot define. John the baptizer appears in the wilderness helping the whole countryside of people of Jerusalem prepare for the power of the one that is coming, the one more powerful than I. That's our answer in the wilderness. When we are complaining and blaming and feel ignored and feel unappreciated, feel anxious and uncertain, afraid and fearful, vulnerable and at risk, that's when we say, there is one more powerful than I who is coming after me. The wilderness prepares the way. The wilderness demands that we deal with our internal issues rather than try to change external issues. That's what difference between water and Holy Spirit. Water is external. Holy Spirit is internal. He says, I baptize you with water. We baptize babies with water. We baptize new believers with water. It's an external baptism. But he said, the one that's more powerful than I is going to go to work on your inner man. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He's going to do an inner work in you, and you're going to have to decide whether to embrace it or complain about it. Time in the wilderness is the normal for God's people. It keeps us prepared for anything. Trusting the one who is more powerful. That's what faith is, Father. Faith is hoping for things I don't yet see. Our problem is we keep complaining about what we see rather than hoping for what we don't see. We keep defining what we've seen rather than what we're going to see. And we're caught in that in-between place called the wilderness. 
Oh, I need some help up here today. It's the norm for God's people. The wilderness is not geography around us. It is the geography within us. Why do people go through the same issues year after year after year after year? Saying hang up, saying complaint, same everything. It's because they don't let the wilderness do its work. They keep trying to go back to Egypt. <laughs> There's nowhere to hide in the wilderness. Turn to somebody and say, there's nowhere to hide there. You are exposed in the wilderness. There are no illusions and distractions in the wilderness. It's a raw place. This is why we don't see people change. Because they keep reliving their dissatisfaction and unhappiness over and over in the package of complaint and blame. Stop running around the building. Calm down. The wilderness is not a place of exile or punishment. It strips us of all our pretense. And we are left to face ourselves. Not what others have done. Left to face ourselves to examine our own hearts and confess the truth about our own lives. The wilderness is not a place where I evaluate others. It's whether I come under the microscope of God's righteousness. It's not a place of exile or punishment. It's a place of self-discovery. Everybody say that with me, self-discovery. The most unhappy people in the world are people who don't know who they are or what they want. Because if you don't know who you are, you don't even know what you want. This is, this is the Advent journey. I need to give you something to walk out of here with. Our struggles try to convince us that we are or should be self-sufficient. This is the big thing in America. I'm self-sufficient. I can provide for myself. I don't need anybody. The bottom line is we're very needy. We are in need. And we have nowhere to turn but to the one who is more powerful than I. It reveals our unself-sufficiency. The wilderness always proves how unself-sufficient we are. That's why John the baptizer is our wilderness guide. That's why he's the forerunner of Christ. He is the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Look at John the Baptist. He's clothed in camel hair. He eats locusts. He, he, he has an interior condition that's more powerful than his exterior. It's the state of his heart. We sung it today. It shows him to be one who has let go. Everybody say let go. Let go of all pretense, all preoccupations, and all accumulations of life. See, here is a dangerous place. In the desert, you can't go to the mall to feel better. <laughs> In the desert, you can't go to the bar to feel better. In the desert, you can't get your drug of choice to feel better. In the desert, you can't go to where you can go in Egypt to feel better. And God's trying to get us disconnected from Egypt with our preoccupations, our accumulations, and our possessions so we can live at peace as we heard in the epistle today. There is no peace without the presence of Christ. He knows his own unself-sufficiency and trusts himself to the one who is greater than him. The unself-sufficiency revealed by the wilderness opens our minds to a larger story. It opens our heart to a new life. It turns our focus to the one who is coming. See, here's the problem. When you live in the past, you can't anticipate the one that's coming. We all know people who live in the past. They've told the same story about their disappointment for year after year after year. It continues. You cannot walk in faith focused on the past. You cannot see a new beginning focused on something that should end. This is what 
This is why people don't get breakthroughs in their marriage. They don't get breakthroughs in their relationships. They don't get breakthroughs in their businesses because they hold on to something that's obsolete rather than grab a hold. I'm trying to help you. If, if I, I've learned this. Athletes and businessmen and musicians and artists have to have fresh creativity in order to stay relevant. You need to remake yourself in the wilderness. It's in the wilderness you get a new year you in the wilderness. <laughs> it opens our heart to a new life. It turns our focus to the one who is coming. It frees us of pretense. Everybody say pretense. You know what pretense is? It's putting on a show to look better than things really are. Dress it up, pump it up, tan it up, and whatever you up it. Bling it up. Bing it up, whatever you need to do. Where has your life become overly self-sufficient? I'll tell you where it starts. When you think you can fully sustain yourself. What might unself-sufficiency look like in your life? How do I know what self-sufficiency looks like? I'm going to give you this for free. You know what unself-sufficiency looks like. It's revealed by what you complain about and blame. It proves you're self-sufficient. <laughs> by what we complain about and who we blame determines our unself-sufficiency. What does letting go of pretense mean? It means letting go of false appearances. What does letting go of preoccupation mean? It means... Letting go of the wrong priorities in life. What does letting go of accumulations mean? It means getting rid of the possession obsession. I'll feel better if I can get something new or somebody new. You cannot escape your wilderness, but you can change locations in it. You can relocate yourself in a wilderness but never escape it and getting something new isn't going to fix it because it's there to reveal what's going on inside of us. Look at the ways we try to live our self-sufficient lives. Are you all here today? See, this is where true wealth comes from. Poverty is an obsession possession. Self-sufficiency can be disguised as busyness. People stay busy in the wilderness. They make golden calves. They complain. They argue. They stay busy. Their calendars have no free space, and they have a never-ending to-do list because they don't want to deal with their wilderness. Turn to somebody and say, let's deal with our wilderness. Self-sufficiency is revealed in comparisons and competition with other people that hide in our relationships and interactions with each other. Oh, I don't compete. I promise you, you do. In your house, you compete for control. Who's calling the shots and who has to submit to who? Self-sufficiency is at the core of all of our judgments of other people. Why can't they get it right? What's wrong with them? Are they ever going to learn their lesson? That's my self-sufficiency problem. Oh, boy, that, Father, it's struggling up here a little bit today. You feel it? The unending search for approval. The unending search for approval, recognition, and accomplishment is driven 100% by self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency messes up relationships because it says, I want to stay independent from what you could mess up. Oh, that, that went whew, boy. The ever-ending search for approval. I, if I just can be acknowledged, if I can just be appreciated, if I can just be approved, my life will be better. You're not in reality. 
The only one person that you need to receive approval from, and that's the one that's greater than I. The seal of approval must come from God before you'll ever feel approved anywhere by anything or anybody. Our fears, our worries, our anxieties, and even our anger are the byproduct of our self-sufficiency. And it's when our self-sufficiency feels threatened that we become angry and anxious and fearful. The many expectations we place on ourselves and others. Placing expectation on myself and even on other people is a sign that my attitude of self-sufficiency is still saying, I can fix it. We are not helpless. We have responsibilities. We have resources and abilities. Living overly self-sufficient lives causes us to isolate. Here's a funny thing about it. You think self-sufficient people would be in the center of activity when actually self-sufficient people isolate. We declare the way of the Lord to be a closed road when we isolate. Relief from the wilderness comes from preparing the way in the wilderness, the light of Christ. Beloved, I'm finishing. Say thank God to your neighbor. What wilderness are you in today? Take a minute. What wilderness are you in? When we live from a place of self-sufficiency, we make ourselves the more powerful one and have no need of each other or of Christ, the one more powerful than I. See, I don't know if you're still getting it. The one more powerful than I. The one more powerful than my independent approach. What wilderness are you in today? Are you in a financial wilderness? Are you in a relational wilderness? Are you in a marriage wilderness, a fa family wilderness, or a friendship wilderness? Are you in a health wilderness? Physically, mentally, or emotionally? These wildernesses exist so that we can trust the one that's more powerful than I. We are all in a social wilderness right now due to the pandemic and such. We're all in a social wilderness. And here's the thing about the children of Egypt. They were collectively in a wilderness. That's why collectively you've got to stop and help each other from the blame complain game. And become positive that the one that is coming is more powerful than I. We, are you in a spiritual wilderness? No passion, no fire, no faith. What is your response to your wilderness experience? Stand to your feet with me this morning. What is your response to your wilderness experience? Hope? Faith? Complaint? Blame? Paul wrote the church at Ephesus and Corinthian. He said, help each other, encourage each other in the right things. The best thing you can do raising your children is teach them not to be whiners and complainers. The best thing you can do in your circle of friendships is say, why don't we just stop the complaining here and why don't we trust the one that is more powerful than us? Because once you get in that vein, you're going to stay in that vein for a whole generation until you trust the one more powerful than me. Let's not leave here today as self-sufficient as we came. Let's trust the wilderness of Advent. Let's begin to live from a place of unself-sufficiency. This is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our lives are sufficient for God. There is a way in your wilderness. Prepare the way, the truth, and the life. How many of you today with me 
Say, Holy Spirit, check me when I start complaining or blaming. How many of you will say that today? Raise your hand with me. Some of us are just too addicted to it to let it go. What if I told you that's the key to your breakthrough? Not a new location in your wilderness, but to stay with it and get to the promised land. Because the wilderness is the preparation for your promise. It is not the destruction of it. The one more powerful will appear at the right time. The wilderness process precedes the promise. We are called to be God's sufficient people, trusting in the one who is more powerful and greater than I. I want you to say this with me. There is one mightier than I coming after me. No, I don't mean behind you. I mean after you. See, if I come after something, that doesn't mean I come behind it. It means I go for it. There's one mightier than I coming after me. The Holy Spirit, God himself is hounding you down for your purpose. There is one more powerful than I. I'm not even worthy to lace his sandals. Father, today, we all have our wildernesses that we're in. Some of those wildernesses are not even defined for us. But we know that you use the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. To prepare the way, not the principles, but the way, the very person of the Lord to come after us. And today, Lord, we renounce the demonic seduction that comes with the wilderness to cave in to self-sufficiency, to cave in to independence and isolation. And we embrace Christ and his body. I bless you all now to leave this place whole and complete bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us profess our faith in Almighty God. We believe in one God.